continue uh, more quantitative calculations. Um, again, I try to use this model and then to show a few definitions. Um, this is the, the white paper. This is the equatorial plane. Okay, and that is, this is the orbit. And in particular, uh, this orbit may be in this orientation. Okay, maybe in that orientation, anyhow. So here, uh, I want to show you in this way. So say this is the I-axis, and this is the orbital plane. And you can see this is the equatorial plane, this is the orbital plane. Their intersections actually is given by this line. And this line is called the line of nodes. Okay, there's a collection of the many points. Basically, this line called the line of nodes. This one, you need to pick it up. And then on the other side, if, for example, on the orbit, the satellite is uh, moving in these directions. In front of you is which direction? Uh, Counterclockwise, right? Okay, if satellite is moving in these directions, and you can see this one going to this, again, this is a line of the nodes. This is a line of the nodes, and satellite is going to move uh, across the equatorial plane going down underneath. We say, let me use the say South Pole is underneath of the equatorial plane, and North Pole we are above. Okay, so satellites moving down. So basically, this is called the node of descending, and then continued and make a cycle, and make a cycle, and then going to from here from this point going up. So this is called the node of ascending. Okay, one is node of descending. This is called the node of ascending. So that's kind of the few uh, terminologies for you to pick it up from here. Then we're going to see how can we uh, do the calculations. So again, back to here, using this example here, this line is uh, the line of nodes. And then, for example, this satellite is going in this direction. Basically, this point representing is the ascending node. On the back here, 180 degrees on the upper side. On the opposite side, that is the descending node. And now we're going to begin to do the, um, the, the determine the the orbital elements, and again, I will go over slice by slice, and I will write it down the important equations here, and then later, once we do the uh, examples, we can compare the, those examples here. Okay, and um, again, we have six orbital elements. The first two is about the shape and size of the orbit. So here, let me write it down. And here our goal is uh, determine six orbital element, and um, Here we assume R and V are given, okay, velocity and uh, the positions at a particular point is uh, measurable. So here for the for those one we're going to calculate is the first one we can calculate determine the angular momentum H. 
H simply is R cross V. Okay, and in the um, rectangular, in the um, the geocentric corner system, and using I J K, again I is the axis and aligned to the equal the vertical equinox, and again that is the fixed uh, directions in space. So here we can put into here if we're going to use I J K as the unit vectors there, then here is say R I and R J and R K and V I V J and V K. So if you have the numbers you simply put into here you can do the calculations. Okay. And let me define if you have a result is say uh, H you obtain is H I, H J and H K. I'm writing up because later on I'm going to refer to certain uh, symbols here. And so that is the, first, the second one, the, the first one. The second one, we want to determine the eccentricity. Eccentricity basically is a pointing to the perigee directions. So by calculating, by determining this one, uh, by calculating this one, we will be able to determine the direction of the perigee, which means the direction of the major axis in 3D space. Okay, so we do this one. So E will be equal to 1 over mu and V cross H minus mu over R, R. And this is the equation we uh, copied from the previous chapters because V, H is calculated, V and R are given. So this one we can determine this is the uh, vectors. Okay. And the third one, we're going to determine is the n vectors. And what is n vectors? n is um, n vector is the uh, pointing to line of the note. So determining the n vectors will give us the orientation of the line of notes. Okay. And n vector here, you can see the feature is this. This vector is normal to k. k is the unit vectors in here, and also this vector n is normal to h. So n is by normal to k and h. So here we can use the cross product. So don't worry about these numbers, and don't worry about this result, we simply remember this one, okay? So that is a vector, once we have the numbers, we can, you should be able to quickly do these kind of things. And then, um, Here, then we can begin to determine, say, um, so for example, here we can determine the magnitude uh, P. So, for example, P is equal to um, H squared divided by mu. Okay. And also, we can determine uh, E. The magnitude of the eccentricity basically is the magnitude. Eccentricity basically is the magnitude of these uh, E vectors, so we can have this one. So the two are the first two uh, orbital elements. Once we have P, we have E, then we can use the tree sheet or, or tables uh, in chapter one uh, to determine everything else. Okay, uh, about the size, the shape of the orbit. <coughs> 
then the remaining I'm going to determine is the about the orientations of the fundamental planes in uh, the orbit. So let me move on to the next page. So now I so here we have two. So right now we have four remaining. So the next one I want to determine is the orientations of the uh, orbital plane. So that means I want to determine how the orbital plane is inclined. That means the angle I. Okay, so say this is the first element. Um, so this is, I would say this is preparation. This is first uh, orbital element. So this is the second orbital element, okay? And for the third one is I. So I simply is the uh, the angle between two vectors. So that can be using the inner product and for doing that. So which means for the third one, let me do the scratch papers here, the scratch calculations. This is the vectors here, and this is the angle I. One is the K vectors, one is the H vectors. So we take the inner product H dot K equal to cosine I and equal to the magnitude of H, magnitude of K and cosine I. Okay, so with that one we can have the cosine I in calculated. So cosine I is equal to magnitude of H, magnitude of K, and then uh, K of H, H dot K, either way. Okay. So the third is we simply take a cosine of this point. The fourth one. The first one we want to determine is this omega. This is the angle between the line of nodes and vector and the i axis. So basically, again, taking the similar way. And right now, we have is this angle, and we have two axes, i and n. OK, so we simply take up this pattern here. So that is cosine omega equal to magnitude of i and magnitude of n and i dot m. Okay. And so here, if you want to take the arc cosine, uh, arc cosine, then you have the numbers. And in particular here, omega could be anywhere from 0 degree to, 100, uh, to, uh, to 360 degrees. So let me make one example here, see if I can use this one to demonstrate. Um, okay, so this is, I show this is one of it. Okay, so let me align I to there. Um, and again, uh, this is the um, line of the note, line of the note, so say, for example, here. Okay, so here, assuming this is the line of notes, so basically this angle showing is, um, this angle from here, from here to here showing about 30 degrees. So line of notes can be anywhere, so to this case, can be anywhere from 0 to 360 degrees, you can see. Okay, so that is the range of the capital omega. So under these situations, then you must be very careful. And so here, um, if we want to determine is this, because in your calculators, again, I will come to this one. So this is the angle. So this is 360 degrees, and this is zero degrees here. In your calculator, your calculator can only provide 
this range. So that is the range, the uh, range uh, outcome from say TI uh, 84. Okay. And your calculator won't be so smart to give you the numbers here. So here I want to, uh, we have to artificially uh, justify how we can do this one. So from here, this rule is this. Again, omega is the angle between the line of nodes and, and I. So once this axis is, if this axis is in the first quadrant and second quadrant, then this number is um, 0 to 180 degrees. So that is the range your calculator will give you the result. However, if this line of nodes in the third and fourth quadrant, then what happens? Graphically, we can right away to tell omega is more than 180 degrees. And that is in the range with graphing there between 180 and 360. That is beyond the range your calculator can give to you. And what is the features when the line of node N is in third and fourth quadrant? That is when the second component of NJ, NJ is the second component of N. And I, and J, and NK. When the second component become negative, then that means the n vectors are in the third and fourth quadrant, right? So once you determine, once you calculate n, you notice if the second component of the n vectors is negative, then right away your numbers of the omega must be automatically calculated by this one. Got it? And so here, <coughs> when nj, that is the second j component of the n vectors, is negative, that indicating right now that is in n vector in the third and fourth quadrants, then that omega must be more than 180 degrees. So once you punch your calculators, what you have to do is this, and your calculator will give you this number, say this is omega. However, right now you are Calculating determining is this omega. Okay, what is this omega? That omega is 360 minus this one. This one is your calculator output. So I would say the your omega is 360 degrees minus omega. This omega is from your calculators. Will I be clear? Okay. So that is the kind of the uh, exceptions to the uh, we take care of this one. And the fifth one is omega. The, the fifth one I want to determine is this omega. And similar way, omega is the angle between the m vector and e vector. So we take out this similar patterns here. So we have the n vectors and e vector, this is our omega. So again, we have the similar expressions, omega equal to n vectors and e vectors and dot e. Okay, and again, uh, from this case, you can see Omega, the value of, of, of uh, the the value of omega is the angle we measure in the orbital plane, starting from the line of nodes to uh, e vector. E vector is pointing to the perigee or periapsis directions. Okay, depends. This one perigee sometimes will be in underneath the fundamental equatorial plane. Under that case, if again e vector is below the fundamental plane, then the angle omega will become more than 180 degrees, right? So that is, again, we have the, um, we have this kind of the exception handling for your calculators. When the E vectors, 
when the E vector is pointing, is underneath the equatorial plane, when that happens, when the third component of the E vector is smaller than zero, this means the E vector is, let me define is EI, EJ, and EK. When the K component of the E is negative, that means the E vector is pointing underneath the fundamental plane. Under that situation, is omega equal to 360 degrees minus your omega being calculated from your calculators. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, that is the situation. Okay, okay. Okay, later we can uh, uh, take one example to calculate this one. Okay, and then the last one. The last element is the true anomaly. The last one is the true anomaly mu zero. True anomaly simply is the angle we measure from the perigee axis to where the object on the orbit plane. So that one, again, if this is our orbit, this is the occupied focus, this is the direction of E, okay? and say this is our direction of r, r is given. So again, two vectors, and this is the angle we define as the true anomaly, and we use a new. Okay, so again, two vectors, then we can use the similar patterns. Cosine new equal to vectors and e, and r dot e. Okay, and again, from here, you can see new have the uh, range is from zero to 360 degrees. And if you remember the earlier in uh, the chapter one, we mentioned is let me say if this object is moving, circulating on the orbit in these directions. So those, the upper trajectory, the trajectory, this one is um, the, the, the point corresponding to positive um, um, flat pass angle. And the lower portions This one is corresponding to negative flat pass angle. Okay, so we can utilize the features. We can use if the flat pass angle is positive, then the value of mu is between zero and 180 degrees, and the value of the uh, the the true anomaly would be more than 180 degrees to 360, that is when the flat pass angle is negative, and this is the range, the red one is the range, again, you need to calculate, you need to uh, take care of the calculation from your calculator. So here I would say the new will be equal to 360 degrees minus the new value from your calculators when the flat pass angle is negative. Okay, and how to determine the flat pass angle? The flat pass angle, if you remember, um, again, this is the focus, this is R. This is our orbit, and this is the local horizon.
and this is the B. So this is defined as a flat path angle. Okay. So flat path angle basically is <coughs> On the other side, um, Let me think about why. How to determine flat path angle in this formula, right? This one, I believe this is the right formula for determining flat path angle. And <clears throat> using this formula, right now, kind of thinking is not so convenient. Why? Um, that is the way I uh, kind of thinking, been thinking. Because from this way, you need to also uh, apply another arc cosine to determine phi. And that is not so straightforward. And here, maybe, um, rather than using this formula, let me. Um, Try another way. Um, we can look at here carefully. So on the right path here. So let me take this as as one example. So this is our and this is our uh, local horizon. So that is zero degrees. And let me enlarge the drawing. So this is our R vectors, and this is our V vectors here. From this moment, you can see R dot V is always positive. Why? Because this is a vector R. Right now, for this case, let me overline the R to V at the same location. So here is V directors, and let me overline the overline the the overlay the R, so this is R vectors. So R and V, they basically they, they take the inner product that is positive value. And this criteria actually is true for all the points in the green path here. On the other side, 
for the bottom one here, so say this is all R. And this is the local horizon, 90 degrees. And this is our V. So for the lower case, let me put this one here is V. And for the, at this point, let me move the R to here. So basically here for this one, you can see the inner product of R dot V. is negative. This relation is true for any point at the bottom here. So here I would say, let me put in here the symbols is this. For flight path angle, that corresponding is R dot V is positive. And for negative, flight path angle, that corresponding the rule is R dot V is negative. I think this will be the easier um, uh, checkpoint than this one. Okay, so let me put into here. So when flat path angle equal to zero, less than zero, so that means uh, that is R dot V less than zero. So which means once when you're going to uh, have this one be taken care of is as long as this condition satisfied, then whatever the new from your calculator you simply put into here, that is your true values. This exception is to take care of the conditions at the um, the under portion of the the orbit. Okay. So that is the fundamental uh, concepts for determining the six uh, orbital elements. And here we do have exceptions. And for this exception, you can see those calculations. We're starting from at least from here. We will based upon the, the vectors of n. Assuming the vector of n exists, then we have the three, four, five, six, we have those kind of elements. If the n vector doesn't exist when that happened, if this line doesn't exist when it's that situation, what is n? How we determine the n? We determine the n is by intersection of the equatorial plane to your orbital planes. And under what kind of situation n doesn't exist? That means this one becomes zero, become nothing. So that is when if the equatorial plane, if the the uh, sorry the orbital plane, if the orbital plane is just aligned to um, the equatorial plane. So that means the inclination is zero degrees. So here, exception is this. Just erase it. Um, mu equal to 360 minus mu calculated when r dot b negative. OK? So exception is this. Uh, what happens? That situations uh, say if this is the um, this is the Earth. So this is the equatorial plane. And that means the equator the the um, orbit just in this plane. Okay. So under these situations, and basically we wouldn't be able to calculate uh, the at least three, uh, three, four, 
and at least we wouldn't be able to calculate three, uh, the four and five, okay, because that involves n. So under that situation, we must have kind of exception uh, handling techniques. So apparently, the omega, the two numbers, uh, based upon the existence of n, if the n disappeared, then basically omega, the two omegas won't uh, be appropriately defined. So that means when this situation happens, then um, in this way, the omega and omega r becomes undefined. So if the two elements become undefined, then we need to uh, find the other two corresponding elements. So here we're using, is using um, pi. We're using this. Uh, we use pi. Basically, um, <coughs> pi is to measure from this angle from the i-axis to the perigee axis, so that is the one. So basically we measure from from this axis to perigee to E, so that is one angle. The other one is we using um, uh, L0, and L0, what is L0? L0 is this one. Simply we measure from the I axis to where the positions of the objects on his orbit. Okay, so here we simply use pi and L0 as the uh, placement for omega and omega, okay? <coughs> so under these situations, cosine pi is equal to, again, the pi from here, you can see that is the angle between the i, the fundamental i axis to the e axis. So we take a cosine. So that is I, um, E, and I dot E. Okay. So again, the same thing, the pi will be equal to 360 degrees minus pi when the E vectors, E component less than zero. So the same thing like we uh, similar to have here. And also for L cosine L0, that again, the L0 is the angle we measure between I to true anomaly uh, to the position of the satellite here. So that is the director of, that is the vector of R. So again, this angle is between two vectors, I and R. So we use this as the cosine. In a similar way, if the R components, we might have the conditions more than uh, between zero and 360 degrees. So we simply put into here, so the situation L equal to 360 degree minus L zero, so that is from your calculators, from your calculators. When RJ less than zero. So again, um, if you look at this one, if um, if our vectors in the first and fr in the first and uh, second quadrants, and then the true anomaly will be uh, between zero and three hundred sixty degrees. Sorry, between zero and one hundred eighty degrees. And that is a range from your calculator you can take care of. However, if the R is coming into the lower portion of the orbit, then his Z component, Z component of R become negative, and that situation is falling into 360 degrees. So that means you have to take um, uh, using this kind of the, the exception handling uh, for your calculations. Okay. 
So with everything in mind here, then we can begin to look at one example and we see. And right now I'm going to turn off the slides and then we can work on the one example then with those formulas here. Yeah. 